feel like I've got to start wearing black. I went navy today. You guys are consistent with your black tone. <laughs> I feel like I got enough. You gotta start doing that. I could go with navy blue. You know what I'm saying? I didn't usually go with like whatever, uh, whatever like shorts I have on. I'm a big follower of the no, uh, no black and like maybe blue coming together. Yes, same. And they have to. Yeah. Like, since I was a kid, I remember being like 10 years old, like telling my parents, like, <laughs> why do people wear, just in my head, like, why do people wear black and babies? Well, you can't do it naturally. Uh, yeah. Gavin. Gavin for his uh, his basketball team this year he was on the trailblazer and uh, he came downstairs in his jersey and he had a navy blue t shirt on underneath and I was like the fuck you are I was like go back up the stairs I was like I didn't do it that neatly but I was like nope this isn't happening I was like you gotta go back your chair was a little better and he was like I don't understand it he's like why is it such a big deal but now that like now that he sees it. He's like, oh, we're not doing that anymore. And he'll come to me and if he has like, even like a, like a blue, like a cobalt blue, like blue, blue, you know, his lights there. And he'll come to me and he'll be like, is this okay with black? I'm like, yeah, that's, that works. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope my, I hope my kid comes up to me for like style advice. But mm -hmm. honestly, just like, honest, I feel like my dad gave me enough style advice like early on or like put me in things that I realized, oh, I look good in that like it informed me well enough to miss start making my own decisions about it it's fascinating because i don't know that i've done great like i'm very um i don't know, i want them to be their own people i also know that like like me and my wife but have are like very bold uh not necessarily in fashion like i'm the bold one in fashion but very bold personalities and statements so like i like them to grow in their own way so like i haven't if he asks me about something or if my daughter asks me about something, yes, I will tell him about it. I will educate. I will go down that path, but I don't go out of my way to like do it. And but Gav has, Gav cares about his clothes. Like he, and he, I feel that he's done that on his own or from watching it. But like, mm -hmm. it, it is interesting to see him put something he kind of, he got, he got some, he grew out of like his pants and so we got him some near just like sweats and stuff. And I wasn't a part of it, like Stacy and all. And uh, he came up to me the other day, he's like, I have put together the best fit that I have ever had in my life. <laughs> and I was like, I don't like it. All right, man, we'll love you. Happy to feel it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great feeling. <laughs> now, how you guys bet? How's the past couple of weeks, man? It's been good. We just, we've been putting together a lot of back end stuff, bringing some more people on the team. I think we've mentioned it before, but we just brought three new people onto the team just to help. Yeah. To help do outreach. It's part of, uh, uh, this other company that we partnered with that it's kind of the thing that they do. So they're mainly managing it, but we're really just trying to scale the outreach efforts and trying to close a lot more deals. 2023. How, how big is the team at this point? Six. Good size, man. Everybody is located in different places too, right? Yep. Everybody's remote. How do you feel about that? Trilla. This yeah. new well, way of work. Well, no. I don't even know if we brought this up. We had interns when we were at college. And then that's so that yeah, yeah, we like had an intern run. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm talking that because that was a real interesting experience. So Thanks. we were seniors in college. We had like won like the business competition or whatever, like at our school. It's called the innovation challenge. Right. Mm -hmm. So we had like credit like with the like higher ups wherever like in the school for our business and i was trying to use the business to do everything i could to not do school or like integrate oh, into God. school and so yeah i tried to basically be like i have a business so like just give me credit for the classes that i like could check these things off and, and so i'm talking to all these people and then i'm like oh can i like 
get my students to get credit for working on my business, like my classmates or whatever, you know what I mean? So I could literally tell my friends like, yo, take this semester off, come chill with me, get three credits, like a class basically. And so you would be surprised. <laughs> I'm <laughs> to say no to a couple of people. <laughs> <laughs> like homies was pulling up in like the whole suit. <laughs> you had just like, I'm here. Like, what's up? And we're we're like this in our dorm room. Like, what's up, bro? And you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> now, but when, when it like the how did the school like what was the school's like checkpoints? Like, what do you have to do to like validate that you're doing something? Yeah, so basically I made a deck that outlined like what the role was that we were looking for for like our interns and I sent it to like the who is she like the vice dean or whatever. She was the one that would send in job opportunities like mass email to like the whole business school. And so she sent that to like the whole business school. And so like my friends would section me like, yo, I just saw blah 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 like your company. And then, like, we took the interviews. We got, well, we had, like, four at one point, but we had, like, right. three interns that we, like, had for a minute. Um, one of them helped us, like, she, they followed us around solo, like, around here, and, like, we made videos, content, long helped us, like, produce everything, back end, and, like, publish everything. One of them helped, uh, like we're trying to like book more stuff with different consulting. And so, yeah, we were running all that while we were in school. <laughs> so like, this is really not, <laughs> honestly, yeah, like, this is our easy, like way easier process. <laughs> yeah. Way easier your process. What out how do you, what do you look for, like, in a person? Like, what do you, how do you, I mean, it's a big party theme, right? Like, being small, everybody influences everything, and and you honestly have constant communication. So it's more of a, like, I've always heard there's a couple ways of looking at new hires that, like, we're in GM, we have two ways. It's like culture fit or, like, culture revolution, and both are good. Right. And it's like, is it going to be somebody that you want to just come in and maintain the culture and what you have? And culture is a big term, but realistically, how do they join the team? Do they just come in and lack a better term and they're the sixth man? Right. And then, um, or do you want that a revolution? Like, are you looking for that thing that's going to shake everything up and give you like a new energy and your thought process? So like, how did you got, you've been doing it obviously for a few years now. So how, how did you look at that stuff? So these are the questions that we ask. It's true. And I feel like some of them are like specific to uh, basically a role that we're trying to fill. But the type of people is like all the questions toward the end we ask them. My favorite one is uh, what is your largest ambition in life? This says a lot of person over financial freedom. That's fascinating. But like people's, the way that people answer this question says a lot. But all right. In what way? I'm curious because like, I'm very wordy. Like I like, like I, I'll sit and write in mind. Then concise, like I'll hit you with like, I'll hit myself with like, you know, a thousand words, 2000 words, and then scale back. So like there is being, you know, six, not including that a little bit. Now, these are our notes. We're like talking to them in person ask. Oh, I got you, my man. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say simply like vision, recognize vision. And we're looking for people with vision and like people who aren't scared to access their imagination and like look past their like current situation. Like how can we go from good to optimal? That's like our whole there are people who fear their ambition and like right. that's an automatic red flag you can't work with us but that's maybe the only like hard no right 
Otherwise, it's like, well, at least it's easy. How do you, how do you find out that they fear their ambition? I agree with everything you just said. So how do you find out, like, how do you do this system? Their answer, honestly, I feel like their answer says it all, their energy with their answer, how much they've thought about it. A lot of, some people will say, honestly, like, I haven't really thought about it. Like, I haven't had, I thought about it a little bit, but like, I haven't really sat down and wrote it down. You know what I'm saying? And like. That's on, on like the lower end of the spectrum and then like the middle end, I won't go through the whole thing, but there's some people who have developed it more than others and you could definitely tell and you could definitely tell like the confidence in their imagination to like say it out loud to other people too is that's another like biggest, level of confidence. That's the biggest part because like if some people like can sit and think and be like, ah, oh, like. I want to do this with my life for years, but like the difference makers in like tangible space are the people who are able to articulate what it is that they want. And so like, that's why, like, I don't even, when we ask a question, it goes over people's head, like why we even ask, but like, cause then if people give us a good answer to this question, we're able to create like, an immediate like symbiotic yep. like trustworthy long term relationship because we're on the same page this is like the whole point is like if we can because then it's like all right we can align our ambitions and we're golden and yeah but like this is this is the biggest one we asked like also do you have an exercise routine uh what is a major issue in the world to you right now are you working on anything outside of work and then like are there any questions you have for us is there a question i didn't ask there's another good one like three superpowers you think that you have you know what i'm saying what would you say are your three superpowers that also says a lot about what people think about themselves we have some of their favorite genre of music how they like to dress and like that gives a like very high level of like who the type of person that yeah. will do i will also say these people none of these people are front facing in our business so we didn't have to necessarily like they didn't have to pass that level yeah um, i don't know act of the client right right and the system that they're in is pretty like it's kind of like you do it or you don't. We have like basically the contract is like basically a quota and they're supposed to get a certain amount of meetings booked per week. And so if they don't, then the company that we partner with, they have a whole bunch of appointment setters and they're like, if they don't do it, then we'll just recycle them out. And so, and so really we just want to find people that are motivated. They are already kind of indoctrinated with being like in this role already. So they're kind of already looking for something like this. So we're really just trying to find people again, vision sees vision and ambition sees ambition. So as long as like Jay said, we can align our ambitions, then um, I think these people could really help us. How long you vision having an employee like gone are you some? Because I think this is a major transition that's happening, and, and it's already happened. Just to be frank, but like some of the people that go into like a regular corporate culture type scenario, that that those places haven't grown to accept it yet. Where I think that like a, a career span, you know, if we were to go back to our parents and other stuff, like it was probably thirty to forty years at one place. Like they were kind of taught that it was like, no, you push your time, your energy, your effort into the shirt. And like now it's like, I think it's, I, I think even two to three years is long now. It's about getting more experience and growth and people are willing to balance. So as you're interviewing somebody and you have a vision of like, yo, this might be six months, you know what I mean? Like how do you look at it? Of course. So Jay, well, first, wait, first, go ahead, Jay, you can say yours first. Zero employees, zero investors. That's first. And we can explain more about that. But the way that 
we work with, I'm going to call them vendors, people who supply service to us. Mm -hmm. They are They're the customer, right? Right. They are always a revenue share, royalty, percent based agreement. Once we talk to them and we understand that our vision aligns, if we've worked together and had success working together and our vision aligns, we understand like nowadays, we were watching a video the other day talking about how the world changed. You got to hop, 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 hop. That's 10 years. And it's not like you could keep going up the same line because it's going to switch and go over here. So we know and understand all of that. What I tell these people is, you're not an employee, right? You have an ambition. We have an ambition. We're in these places in life to help each other. As you grow, I'm going to teach you how to create your LLC, make your company, and do your ambition. And when you do that, we're still can use that as a vendor of our company and grow our relationship as we would be friends but as literal entities and ourselves as businesses. This is what I kind of, we use the term, but I think we're going to go full force there, gig economy. And that is where basically everyone, because we can monetize our skills and kind of have like five different virtual jobs, if you will, that we can fill. But the way that the money is structured is so inefficient with employees and capitalism. Employees are not a necessity of capitalism. No, they're not. And it just like bogs everything down. So like also giving people percentages makes them be uh, like merit based and they'll always kind of they'll need to be able to perform in order to maintain the relationship by nature but like you don't have to force extra control over them i guess and so that's that's like really the main point i feel like looking over people's shoulder isn't necessary it's about like whether you get the job nowadays we're like it doesn't matter if you work nine to five like you could do it at three in the morning like if <laughs> I was gonna Man. say, go ahead. You could finish it. Uh, I was, I was gonna say, basically similar to that. The trend is that everybody wants to own their own thing, and like currently, the only the people that are young in the workforce are only jumping around to find what they're truly interested in. And once they find what they're truly interested in, they try to get their bread up as much as they can, so that way they can start their own thing. Yeah, that's like ninety some percent of people. I'm, sh I'm sure, and so. Yeah, we're just like, understand that that is going to be, that is what is from the people in their hearts. That's what they want, but there's not quite the system yet. Ownership it's like building like itself. How you create wealth. And right. so like coming from the senior position, telling them that ownership is how you create wealth and will give you 100% equity of your own thing. So that really makes people want to work with us long term because we're like transparent in that way. But the ownership is like so key. That's the key to the economy. That's the key to like personal wealth and like longevity. That's like family wealth, all of it. And to building personal brand and just like the new wave of capitalism moving forward. So like giving people opportunity where it's like you can do all of that We'll have a contract where it's like, you still do this for me. But, like, you can use your own LLC to do whatever it is that you want. Go make money. And we're not going to get taxes in the way. Yeah. I don't know. All right. There's, I've had so much that we can build off of this. How, um, how, how did you come at this realization? Like, at what point in your guys' life were you were like, no, this is how the ball went from the other? How much is trial and error? How much is reading? How much is constant evolution? Parents, family, mentors, whatever. A lot I of listening. Well, 
it's all observation. Everyone tells me this is not how it's done. And I'm like, I don't vocalize a whole lot that this is how I am doing it. A lot of times people just kind of see it as like, oh, like it's just me and Dez or small business or whatever. I don't really talk. I don't really speak on it. Um, But I feel like now we kind of see the change in the world. We're going towards gig economy. And I really feel like we can be pioneers in this space because to create the vision, like a Deloitte X LVMH, a Kith X Y Combinator, that has no employees and no investors. The market cap potential of that entity is never before seen because the top line revenue to EBIT is like a video game. Like we don't play that way. So yeah. And that and then we're giving that system to everyone we work with. This is fascinating. I mean, like, all right, so we, we talked about, we were, we were talking about how you hire people, how you look at people, and how you do these other pieces to it. And it's like, you know, Dad, as you made the comment, you think like 90% of people are like stacked in their bread. I think 90% of people will tell you they are, but I think maybe 15% are actually. No, no, no. I'm not saying that they're like in their mind. I agree with yeah. probably, probably 5% of people are actually put in a plan in place and are actually doing something about it. And trust me, like we've shown plenty of people the sauce and then they just like drop it on the floor and they're like, oh, quit, quit. And I got, I mean, literally. They spill it, don't clean it up, and then just like walk away from it. And you're like, okay, <laughs> all right. Because it's like that. Thing. But everybody has that. Like, ever, I feel like a lot of people our age also see that that is the way we're moving forward. That if I want to have the freedom, the time freedom, the money freedom, and all of those things that one, I see on Instagram, and two, I just like really. It's, it sounds way better than a freaking nine to five and getting a like get, getting unemployment and all of that stuff over time. Like I've always had this this thing about like so much of like what my skill is and talent is is not something that I can document and like lay out. And like I can tell you that I'm gonna get us to the Z. And I know how I'm going to start A, but everything in between, I can't. And I, that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And what I've started to notice even comparing myself to other colleagues and other people in the field is that, like, you, you talk about imagination, you talk about creativity and other things. I think everybody has that. At some point, you thought not to do something with it, or something happened to you, mm-hmm. scared to do something with it. More than a piece of you that's afraid to like. No, you're literally not allowed to unless you own it. So that's why so I, I had to give myself permission by like owning the company at a young age or it would not be possible in life. Basically. But I've been always like on this quest to understand how how people get it. So to me, it is what you just said. That there is a real it factor to a lot of this stuff. And it can't always be decided. You can't tell if it's going to be a noun, a verb, or an adjective, or how it's going to work. But like, it is this moment of where it all clicks and you put it together and you have to decide if you're going to go to that next step. And I find it just very fascinating of of, uh, how many people are willing to have the courage because I think a lot of what you guys are talking about is having the courage to go and do that and figure that path out and harness that superpower of whatever that it is, you know? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think something like one of our, real quick, Jay, one of the uh, interviewees said yesterday um, that one of their superpowers was that they were curious Yes. And that was like something that we were like, that's, that's yes, bad. you're in. <laughs> like, you're in. If you, you like seek, if you seek on your own, right? right ahead. If you have your own, if you're confident in your own seeking and you've gone through the process and you have your bullshit meter, you know what I'm saying? That works well. And you have just the more direction that is always, it's always better characteristics. Jay, go ahead. Yeah. So this one I have on the screen. 
this is what crystallized it for me. I was like, I don't even know, maybe watching a movie or YouTube or whatever, went to, I think I was like, Brand was laying out my fryer. I think that I was like looking up what a consigliere was. And so I found this chart and then the thought about the whole economy thing just like crystallized like in my head. I was like, you can do this with percents. It's fast thing. Well, because I said, I said either it's entity or people. I'm like, this is like Des and I, and then like, this is like this other company we hired. And then like, these are like the people under them. Like the appointment said, it was like, we just did everyone works off of percentages. So like they get a fee, like they get a, whatever these people get a percent and like all of this like grows infinitely with like webs and creates an economy and creating an economy is the answer to how to be a billionaire. Shout out chat GPT. <laughs> that was notion. Yeah. True. Yeah. Same yeah. type. But yeah, like just spreading the, instead of like thinking of it as crime, like just splitting percentages in this way instead of having employees this is like the new web i feel like yeah this is a dark a dark conversation that says but like outside of like murder i don't know that there's a lot of real crime in this world there's like opportunity and who allows opportunity and that's like you learn if there was a lot of crime interviewing these people to be honest like yeah <laughs> oh neat Nah, yeah, they're like, we, I mean, they, they shooting us at the bank and the school. We asked one of the questions, what is something that you used to believe or what is a belief you held about the world that you no longer hold? And somebody said basically that America was sweet. <laughs> and I like, ex they were like, explain. And they were like, I mean, can't go, like, they shooting at the bank, they shooting at school. Okay. It's chaos. So it's to me, when I actually see that, it's, it's fascinating. Like, growing up, like, I never really believed in patriotism. Like, one of my greatest arguments that I had in high school was my, uh, not, so 9-11, I was a junior. So it was probably my advanced drawing class or advanced painting. And, like, 9-11 happened. No disrespect to anything with 9-11. It's a tragedy in every part of that. But they were like, you're going to do a patriotic piece of artwork. And I was like, no, I'm not. Like, it's like, no, no, I'm not. And there is like seven of us in the class that are in this like advanced class. I was like, and I was like, no, I'm not. And like my high school art teacher was like, she's like a, a, a mom to me, like for sure. And she's like, no, you're, you're, you have to do this. And I was like, no, I'm not. It's the only class I ever truly failed. And it was because I was like, I'm not fucking doing that. Like, I'm going to go over here. And I can't even remember what I ended up doing. I just did my own thing. And it was like this real big statement. But like, I've never had this like feeling of what patriotism is. So as I hear the answer to your question, it's not about America. It's about the failure of capitalism. Because America isn't a place. America is a massive business. There's just a bunch of capital. I don't think it failed. That's a harsh term. Because all that, like, it was a necessary sequence. Like, but continue. Well, it's just one of those things where it's like you're taught to like put these dreams on paper. And I think up until I would say the internet really took over like 2007 to eight area where it was like, this is a functioning piece of society that we can't succeed without. And like up to that point, it was like, you can use it as a tool, but now it's like, this is a part of life and you're going to have to utilize it. And I think, because you had kind of started, well, we both said it uh, about 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, of like this idea of uh, where you're, you know, capitalism keeps moving. It never stops. And, you know, at GM, I went, one of the greatest things that's ever heard was actually on like the second day that I was there, it was like GM's been around for, at that point, it was 105 years. Like it's it was here before me. It's going to be here after me. And we kind of always talked about it like, there's a lot of executives, especially in the design side there, that like have this power and this hierarchy and this like 
I'm so special. And you can see where it gives them their ego. Like you can watch it, but like no disrespect. You're not doing anything that's revolutionized. The you're not a Zaha Hadid. You're not like a Frank Gehry. You're not any of that. So you walk out of this building and the way you get to behave in here and the way you get to act is cool. But the day you walk out, you're replaced. Like it, and you are moved in. The next executive is in line and you're in training. And it kind of clicked for me. And that's anywhere. You can take in GMI, you can throw Apple, you can throw any, any place, any place. And like that kind of clicked for me because at the end of the day, we put all these emotions into what we're doing. We put all of these like human pieces into something that has no feeling. And at the end of the day, it's there for profit. And like when you sit and you pull yourself out of it, you have to have the courage to decide how you matter in this world and like what it is and what you bring because that piece keeps going and you can feel like that little cog. You can feel like that little thing, but you have to have like this own internal urge to just keep pushing and keep making it sure. And I'm like, no, I know that I'm different in this thing. Check out the solution though. Check out the problem that it solves. All right. Unemployment. Right. That's precisely it. And it's like, it, it, there's a reason why a lot of the documentaries about all this stuff is always something too big to fail, right? Because it's like, fails, fails not, and you can't let it fail. Like, I can speak of the one that I came from and is a part of it. If it fails, it fails this entire state, the entire state. And then it has, that just trickles into the rest of them, right? And it's like, it's it's not possible and it's it's so fascinating as we go through you know the silicon valley situation that's been going on you know the bank fail the bank failures that were starting in the past couple of months and it's like it's also tied into media and how it projects it and looks at it as well and why that's important is because like i don't know if those were actual bank failures because if you go and read through all the situations of the three of those banks that we're going through, they were doing some pretty uh, not intelligent business moves over the past decade in general. So it caught up to a year in 2023. But you look for that shockwave and you look for that fear of how it's going to keep going. But at the same time, not on a spot where you could let them fail. You can't. So they were going to get bailed out in some way, shape, or form. But it's like, I, it's just such a fascinating it's a fascinating thing because it makes your question like, is there ever really any like cause again, the solution, the consequences with this system is like, if you don't produce by nature, you're deleted. But if you do produce by nature, you win exponentially. So like, for example, in that whole like structure, that was like mafia thing. If like different is like at the top and we cease to exist, the entire web remains. <laughs> interesting so how does that make how does that make you guys make decisions how, how does it make you like plan next thought next move how, how you get to a point where you're too far. no literally perfect i was saying think- i was thinking about this and i was like gig economy like the world it will be the future if you want to call it like 2300 and so then I was like, we can apply, this applies not just like to a certain industry, it'll apply to literally everyone doing everything. And so I was like, what's the coolest person doing the coolest thing, LeBron James? And so I thought of Moneyball off that. I, do you guys, when you think about like your business stuff, how far do you think I'm indefinitely so like i have like what i know i need to do like action steps like in the moment today tomorrow this week and then i have what i know is like the long long term vision basically like i know we have different and then i want to create different education solve education I want to do some one, solve energy. I want to 
do money ball and help sports and culture different and why luxury brand invest and then private equity all of that blockchain real estate etc then we'll do alexandria use sun one technology which is like turning air into energy build a vertical farm skyscraper first building called the card building and that will be alexandria new entity and then that we will basically grow as the first privatized infrastructure company that I want to build a city long term. In the city, the reason it's called Alexandria, I was inspired by Alexander the Great and all of that. And specifically in Alexandria, ancient Alexandria, there was the Museum. This is where we get museums from. And in that time, literally the sculptors, the painters, the scientists lived at residence in the museum. So like you would go to the museum and Socrates was there and Picasso was there. And I feel like that's how the museum should be and what that can give to information, art, culture, community. So that's what I want to build. That's what I want to give back. And I feel like I can, I have vision and the answers to solve major problems for like food, energy, community culture, shelter, education, unemployment, etc. And it's just a matter of me being the person I need to be, what we said in the beginning, to be able to like say confidently, this is my ambition, lay it out for people so they can understand and we can make it happen. That plan, plot, strategize. So how, wish, goal, plan, action. Very thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, well said. Uh, I went too far, but that's fine. Um, but, uh, how do you, how do you pick your area of focus? Like, do you ever feel like, is there a, there's obviously steps and process, not necessarily what has to come first or what does come first or any of that, but how do you work your way through all that? Yeah? It reveals itself. It reveals itself. I actually love that answer. I think a lot of people, I've always felt that way. Like, I don't like writing shit down, but I know that if I, I know that if it's important, it will come back. Like, I know, I know, like, I have that feeling. And then, like, it also is a feeling of the same sense of, like, like, it presents itself at the right time that it's supposed to be. And it's like, you, you can't force anything. You can, you can try and force it, but it's going to feel forced. I have a great reference. I have a great, like, metaphor. It's like... We're playing like a six-man weave right now. Yeah, probably even more than that. But like, you know, like basketball three-man weave, you know what I'm saying? They're going down the court all moving together, and like we built it as so they're moving in the weave already. They just function that way. So then when you push them down the court, then it makes sense when to pass the ball to the next one, or when to pass the ball to the next one, or when to pass the ball to the next one. And it just like yeah. all starts working together and then just like moves forward in its own system. As you continue to add players to the weave, they just know where they need to go. And then passing is just like, oh, it just shows up like, oh, you, okay. Oh, you, oh, you. And it just like keeps moving. Uh, I apologize. I'm checking into a flight, but I have a question on that. Three man weave takes a lot of balance right if it takes a lot of people being on the same page do you see that as practice or repetition i see it as dharma as purpose from me number one okay if i'm clear on that that makes the weave easy for everyone else you can see that you can see that all right 
This is not at all how I expected this conversation. <laughs> Dude, we, we had a whole lot of notes. We had a whole lot of notes. We got good questions. Oh, this is good questions. We was gonna. We came while we was talking yesterday. Like we want to ask Brett's questions. Well, you came with the questions today. Fascinating now. I'm like, wow. You know, we we do a lot of show and tell. Frank is cool because, like, I get to not long. You ask really good questions. It's usually yeah. us that are trying to like pick other people's brains. I don't, like, this. I always wish somebody could pull these out. Like, All right? No, it's cap. Yo, bro, real quick, because like we we like moved past it so fast, but I'm gonna bring it back. Like 20 minutes ago, you said talking about how you refuse to do the patriotic piece of music yeah. or a piece of art, piece of art. And yep. it just, re- it reminded me of, like, this and, like, Jay and I both, like, grew up on this. And, like, when we met each other, like, this was an understanding that we had before we knew each other. And it, the intuition of it, just the understanding only showed itself as we continued to, like, move out, like, our day. But I'm going to share a song. I hope I know this one. Yeah, the row. Back. And like, so this is where about the politics shit when I was like, fuck politics. Yeah. That was a good story too. I remember <laughs> there was the first year I met Jay. We're chilling in his in his dorm room, and I'm like, it's some something happened. It's like some Donald Trump is happening basically, and like all of this stuff and the political race. And I'm like sitting in his room and like with Jay's roommates, and we're talking politics, and just like I can't believe like shit is going crazy basically. And I, like, kind of asked Jay to, for, like, his two cents in it. Like, do you care about, like, Jay was just kind of, like, tuned out. And we were, I was like, do you care about this at all? And he was like, I don't give a fuck. And I was like, I got offended by it. Was like, what do you mean, bro? Like, it affects you. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? Everybody that really cares about politics, all of the things, like, it affects you even though if you don't care about it or not. So, like, it's better off if you care about it type of thing. But I have always had like a very similar mentality. Like, and I think some people, and yes, I do know this still level very well. Uh, I, so Bobby, your Kendrick was my Tupac, right? That was the era that I grew up in of like, there's the Tupac Biggie stuff, but there's also like, basically everything up to me against the world that was like questioning everything and i think to go directly off of your guys's conversation in the dorm room and it's it's interesting because i have people that were that are very close to me from home that are catching up to where i'm at now as to where i was when i was probably 17. when is this very clear to me the politics are just a way of control and that they're just a way of basically the capitalistic stuff that we've been talking about. I don't believe too many of them get into this to actually affect anybody. And I have a true belief of like circle of influence. Like if you want to actually affect people with your politics, then you probably shouldn't go past being like a mayor because once it gets so far out, you're not, it's not possible. There's so many things there in between. And so all these promises that are made, And I think more so now than even when I was young and able to kind of look at this stuff, more so now you can see like all the bullshit where it's like you have one man telling a group of people that they're going to wipe out student debt. He knows he's not going to be able to do that. So we're going to send that over to, you know, the Supreme Court that's ran by the Republicans. So now it's the Republicans' fault. And it's like, it's just all so interconnected and so not like a reality. So I never liked putting my time into it. I still don't. I will read it. I will follow it. I absolutely know what's going on at all times, but I know that it's an energy that is more draining than giving. And I don't want to put all of that into it. Uh, it's definitely, so I, I don't, I don't get into it. What were you saying? It's definitely real and necessary. It doesn't get to why I said, or why I said, I don't care. And it, yeah. it it's, I like to make it like a story. I took like honors history, like all through high school, all through high school. And then senior year, I took like AP government. And so, 
Yeah, nah. So like that taught me how the government works. And that's like a information that most people don't honestly get. Cause I took another class in college that like surface level kind of even touched on that stuff. But once I understood, oh, this is what the president can do. This is what like these are the laws. This is what the constitution is. This is what the Supreme Court is for. This is what the Congress people can do. This is how the meetings go. Mm-hmm. So oh, the filibuster is right. So like once I understood all of that, I was like, well, you just put people in the machine and they're just cogs. Like, I don't care. What, mm-hmm. I'm like, whatever. Like, did they change? Did they change the Constitution? All right. Then, like, stop wasting my time because I need to focus on what I'm doing to change the world. <laughs> well, I'm, for me, like the other part is, is like and to tie like all this stuff together. We're not having these conversations and these other pieces. It's like. I'm more looking for people that are willing to ask a question and have an opinion. And a lot of times people use politics as a reason not to have an opinion. They can say they support it because they don't want to think about it. And again, that comes back to encouragement. Like broad, growing up in like small Midwest town, like so many people are like, we don't talk about religion. We don't talk about this. We don't talk about business. We don't talk about what's big. You don't talk about it because you're afraid to talk about it, because you're afraid to to talk about it. That's the reality of it. You're afraid of what somebody else might be doing that you're not doing. You want to have these blinders. This idea of like ignorance is bliss is a real thing. And it's been pushed on to people to keep themselves ignorant. And I think that like that is the scenario. And yesterday I was reading a um I was reading um, you know, it's tax season, right? Well, it's more than tax season, it's basically tax week. But like reading a a, a portion of like how Oh, like an Asian art block and some of these other people are wanting you to basically publish this stuff to say how much they're quote unquote saving you. And you know, the IRS treats it as a scenario like that's between you and us. Like and like don't have it. And it's interesting because both of them are doing the same thing. IRS, how much they're taking from you and how much they're gonna do it. And the other one is like, how much you pay us and how much we save you, right? It's not that different. And it's just this fascinating game of what we consider to be transparent and don't and how much we're willing to share things and where we want to go with it, right? It's like, it's just, I don't know that I have the answers on it, but it's just always observations I've made. And a lot of these pieces are what holds other people back as well. Being afraid to have that view and afraid to have those conversations is some of the main reason why people don't go and do what you're saying is starting their own business and starting that LLC. It's that fear that's already been driven right into you. And as I'm saying, like, we take away the fear when you work with us because we're like, this is our, like, if you're an employee, you're not an employee, we're going to, you're going to make an LLC. So <laughs> I think the other part of that stuff is like, you know, it's, um, I mean, I'll use my relationship with my wife as a perfect example. Like, AP, everything, like, just crazy intelligence, like, going through it. Man, it's just, like, really good rule following to some extent. And, like, me as an issue. Everything yeah. points in the same direction. Theology, religion, and philosophy all point in the same direction. Well, for me, it's just, like, now I'm just going to figure this shit out. Like, I know what I want to do. I do not need to be taking algebra, advanced algebra, and all these other pieces. I'm like, well, I don't need to do that. Like, I don't need to know how to get the best out of my portfolio so I get into the best college so I can learn these other pieces. I didn't need to be taking things in so I didn't fucking pay attention to the shit that I've been wanting to. I feel this is a waste of my energy. Why would I put that time in there? So everything that I've had and everything that I still gain and grow, it's me hustling and finding my way through. As she's went independent over the past like five years and started her own practice and stuff like that, learning like the same stuff. And that's not to say that what she did in high school, those foundation pieces are perfect. Because like on the flip side, we have, I have my son here who is learning to play piano, which is in the other room over here. And like he loves to explore, go do it. He can make his own sounds, loves to put all of these effects that are on the piano. It's beautiful. I love it fucking hates his piano lessons because it's tied to the book and it's like this i'm like no let's look at it as a foundation so when you're doing that exploring that you can execute that exploring on a higher level right like so it's like as you invent something which is what you enjoy doing and not having any parameters to it you now have a basis to go and take it it's like you know probably one of the better 
synthesizing sounds that we've had in the past, I don't know, 30 years as it might be, right? Which is, or even like a Travis Scott or something like that. But it's because they have those formal pieces that they're able to create something brand new and fresh. And it's fascinating because both of them are very similar in that sense. Like Stacy is now getting to this point where she's like, oh, if I ask these questions, then I do this right. It grows me in this way. And, and it's when you have that power, when you have that, it tells you you have that other piece. You can see where you can take all this stuff, but it's not in front of people and they don't ask it the right way and they don't go and do it. It's just a very, it's a very challenging thing. As you pointed out about religion and philosophy and the other pieces, it all points in the same direction. But it's what you do with it, it is that's going to shame you. Why well, that? I want to go rapid fire. I don't appreciate everything you said. But, like, we got to go rapid fire because we didn't talk about any of it. Here. <laughs> 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 Alright, hit, hit me with it, man. We got it. Uh, we talk to LeBron's people. <laughs> Five. How's it going? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Ideally. He was jealous. Really? He said, I haven't met LeBron yet. He said he just did the impossible. I haven't met LeBron yet. Oh my God. Like, you did the impossible. Congratulations. It was basically like, it felt like if it's Louis XIV France. I basically went to the ball, had a conversation with the king. Now he dapped me up, and then I go to the gate. And there's 18 million people in between the Versailles gate and the king. And every single one of them give you an excuse why not to talk to him. And then, But at this point today, no, I talked to him. So then I just walked right through. And then and I, and I that's the whole metaphor. That's what they all said earlier. Like, right. He said, all right, <laughs> what do you want? You said, <laughs> what do you want? I told him, I told him, for real did that. I want to meet him after the season when there's no basketball, no constraints in July. Whether you want to do it in person, we want, like, want to do it on Zoom, fly wherever. Like, I want a solid meeting in the calendar, sit down, tell him the ideas. And he was like, basically, he was like, all right, I'm going to do my best to make it happen. This is so exciting, bro. Like, <laughs> phenomenal and then we talked to another one at like rich paul's company and the creative director and he was so real that when we told him he said the you talk to the keystone key holder the less people involved the better you don't even want to be involved so like yeah i could go tell rich paul you don't even want me involved and then he gave us like some other advice about how to talk to lebron about it. so that was real and he was like, yeah, you already got a track to go talk to him. Like, don't bring anybody else. Don't, you don't need more decision makers involved. So that's LeBron. Rapid fire. Next. The shoe. The last. Get out of there. Get out of there. Perfect. <laughs> so I drew on it. I put it in millimeters. I don't know if you can really see it. Can't read it, but I can see we got it. Right. I don't, I mean... Try it in there. Live it vaccinated. I will. I will. I'm proud of you, though. That's exciting. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so... Nah, I mean, I'm just curious on your feedback. Like, is I've done the whole, like, drawing on the... This is the first time I've done one of these. So I'm curious about your feedback. Well, I tend to get it... Uh... It's a pet. I don't. I mean, it looks like you have like a, a true plastic wax, and you got to pick the material. The one that we were looking at last time. Yeah, it's like the really new surgeon. It's a shoe yeah, surgeon. One. One. So I easily get a dry erase marker for a bit. Uh, that's why I bet. You get like I tape these thin. Uh, I got the dry erase. I think yo, that works too. Uh, this is nice though, because it could be a little quicker. These are really thin pieces of tape. You can find this at a decent art store. You being in NY, you'll be able to find it. But like, you can then take this tape and like, it will hold really well. And then you can snap line. So like, say you want to figure out if your collar line translates really well. Using tape, that way you don't have to erase it. I don't want to put it on my screen, but you can then move it around like really well on the last, you know? And that helps you to see it. 
because I promise you, once you translate your lines onto that proportion, you're going to be like, oh, this has got to change a little bit, right? Because it's interesting. Like, as we talk about clothing and stuff, clothing is about making very precise cuts that allow the natural movement to make the form. Whereas here, it is all of that, but at the same time, the lines are always stationary. It's so no matter when it drapes. Exactly. Yeah. I so I would play with something like this and, and let your way through it just a little bit. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Then Des, rapid fire, Des made a beat. Facts. They made a little oh, vision for the concepts and I love it. Should the artist. Honestly, we could like. I don't want to like. We could like ask questions over it. I mean, it's just easy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love it. I love the depth of his thing. Great of the Koenig Seg Jamera. I feel like right. we're more super four seaters. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. Why well, I think like it's an interesting company to make because, like, like a Swedish player, uh, the way they're just very so specific on like engineering and like really nailing it. Um, I mean, I've never seen that car in person, but yo, it's dope. The, their stuff is interesting to me. It's kind of Bugatti-esque in the same way that it's very... It looks like it should be so heavy. Like, because it's just so mass-based and, like, pushing and pulling. What I love about them is that they... Not, maybe... Maybe not like a 911, but like a 911, that they evolve. Like, they just constantly involve their core from where they're at. So it ties them in the graphic. Uh, that would be one vehicle that I would love to see in person at the rapid fire. We want to cop that, so like, hopefully we can do that. We'll make that. Fingers crossed, we got it. Yeah. That's my favorite car. That's my favorite car company. I like Christian Von Koning say I think he's dope the way he runs his company. I remember when it came out, like, the, the, the first, like, you know, the Supercar, it was like 2004, and that was like, the game changing. Yeah. The fact that they're able to stay, uh, and they've been able to stay in business, lot, it, doing a car is not. Christian Law is only like 50, you know? I know. Like, that's, to build his company there, that's like so impressive. Just to be able, that's like making huge strides with every step. To be I think it's like 1% of businesses make it to 20 years. I mean, it's, uh, the fact that he's been able to do this is not easy. It costs like a billion dollars to do a car, man. Like, and... He's obviously figured out profitability, so it's uh, yeah, it's beautiful. All kudos to him. Regardless if I think it's the perfect design, I, it, it's amazing. Yeah, it's a great beat. Great music. All right. Well, uh, and then last was the episode. And yeah, there. Chopped up the last one and talking about distribution. How to do it? I mean, also. Let me know because I know you said that you wanted to. Uh, I mean, I could. Oh, I need your image. I already need your photo. Yeah, I was going to say, send me whatever photos or like you send me little clips of videos that you want and I'll make sure to like add that in. I used a like, it's like a one of like the templates. It's like a template thing that I have for like each of the ones that we have. I think I'm going to take that away because I don't really love how like fast it moves through the images. I like could it still let the images slash videos breathe that a little might, bit more. So I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna just like so hard. put it in there. I'm like exactly. It looks so good. I like want it to be just like I want it to be how I want it. So I'm just gonna put in the clips and just cut them myself and add little transitions in. So initially, yeah, just send me whatever you want to add into there. But the other thing why we wanted to bring it up was asking how we should distribute it uh i so um two things one i'll send you like a headshot and that type of stuff tell me how you like tell me what you need my, i'm i have tons of stuff i could send you just tell me what you need from me and i will just simply put give me the dimension so, thing and i'll do it yeah i mean i could i would prefer to be 16 by 9 
Yeah. Even though I can blow up like a square picture, if like it, if it is square, like I could just blow it up. It's not that big of a deal as long as it is good quality. Right. Otherwise, you pick your favorite three to five images slash videos that you think that you want to represent you. Okay. Uh, and in totality. All right. So got I, need, I can do that's what I need. But the, right. the question is though, that's like to create it though. We're asking now like to distribute it. So, so yeah, that's where I was moving to next. Uh, I don't have a deep opinion. If you think YouTube's best right and then we could put clips up on Instagram to advertise that. Uh, I realistically, I only use Instagram because I'm easily distracted by shit and I like to just stay focused on stuff. So, on uh, I look to you guys, the guys, someone say that I'm on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's the other way around. Well, like for me, like with IG, I allow myself a certain amount of time. Like I hit it, I get out, move on, and I just have not went down the path to add other things to it. Like I had a Twitter and I was all over that for years, and then Donald Trump became president, and I got rid of that shit. And Facebook was the same exact story. On um, so. I just allow myself one distraction. That's the best way of saying that. But yeah, not that YouTube would be the distraction. But the other part is, is like, man, I, I don't like searching. For, like, I get in this path of like searching, and I know that's going to take an hour and a half out of my winning brain to play anything. So I'm like, oh, there's mm -hmm. the algorithm feeds you, Brad. <laughs> you just like your Instagram, the algorithm got I you. Bad. YouTube's algorithm. Google's algorithm was way better. Than she ran. To, get, to be honest, like, if you followed the same stuff, on youtube instead of instagram infinite more value but that's a different conversation I that's a I it's it. just i agree you, you would have to click it like it would it's not as much short form content unless you go youtube shorts which there's plenty of it's, but right i was like there's tons of short form there's not as much there's not as much short form content you will eventually have to then get into but that's form. why you get into life because like very you true. can watch a podcast of like, you know what I'm saying? And you could just skip the chapter. Oh, just... Right. Yeah. yeah. That all like another answer. Right? It, feel, it feels like we're doing Gip to man. Like, that's what we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Chelly, I think the I what we said it entirely. Yeah. Like, drop it on YouTube and then like promote uh, pieces of it on Instagram. That we can even, uh, we can even put like five minute clips, you know what I'm saying, on on other platforms as well, not, as well as the little 30 second, 15 second little promos. I love but, it. I'm totally down. Yeah. To as long as you're cool with that, then cool. Yeah. We can always just do like share posts on Instagram as well. And like the collaboration posts. I was had that idea as well. We could definitely have, get some use out of that. I post the links and bios, all that type of shit. Yeah. I'm not cool that. I'm not cool. Oh, you cool guys. Be exciting. And so uh, I'll send you. I don't know what I want my headshot to be because uh, all my headshots have short hair now. I've got long. I'll find something. And then I'll uh, pull, out, pull out the pull out the phone. You know what I'm saying? Get in front of the mirror. That's true. I need to do All right. Hey, have the wife get you get you nice and clean and with some sun on you. Like. <laughs> it's a spare statement. Yes. <laughs> on. We got mad megapixels in our pocket, you know. Oh, I know, all right? Yeah. All right, we can do that, man. Let me get you all that, and then I will also get you some sketch stuff. I, I'll give you some stills, and I'll give you some video. Uh, the videos are technically shot in, like, basically vertical format. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just how I did it in Final Cut Pro. No, that's fine. Like, I added a picture, like, of Jay talking to lebron that's vertical and so like if you want to get off some vertical stuff i can just like blow it up in the do the whole like blow it up in the background and blur it out and then just have yeah. it. so it has a background to it i could always do that as well i actually but, have like a 16 by 9 all right but i was just gonna say send as much as you want i'll say that don't feel like you have to like limit how much like you send actually you know, all right, I will gather that over the next... I got to finish a drawing, and then I will gather that over the next, like, 45 minutes to an hour. How about that? Sounds perfect. Beautiful. This is a good one. I, I, uh, I wasn't expecting the path that it went on. I mean, neither. It was, 
It's a good one. One of the questions I did we didn't get to this one. It's gonna how be, you grab this up. How do you think about the operation and longevity of your company as a business owner? We haven't talked about that that much. We'll do that next episode then. Because we talked a lot. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, about that next, next time. Next we'll do the reverse. About the vision and the business and all of that. We started getting into that. Our, you learned a lot about me today. <laughs> right. That was beautiful. Right. Well, let me. Yeah. All right. We'll do that on the next one. I'm with it. Right. I have to say thank you. But he said, I thought, I thought, I thought. <laughs> All right, well, uh, yeah, we'll be in touch and uh, we'll do this That's until cool. next time. Wow. Right. I can't wait. We send it on over. I'm going to send the beat in the group chat too. Hell, he didn't. We need a group chat, so that's perfect. No, but it'll be the first thing. All right, guys. Have an amazing day. Yeah, you too, man. All right, peace.